What's up, giblets? Today I'm going to show you how to make some sparkle poi and how to sparkle the poi. The first part is going to be about how to make the sparkle poi, and then the second part is going to be how to sparkle the poi. So, um, starting off, you're going to need a few items for this venture. The first is some quick link chain, like so. Is a quarter for size. I'm not sure the name of this type of chain, but any old chain will do. And when I bought it and I brought it back, I counted a certain amount. So I think it's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lucky number eight. That's the amount of connections or connectors. Individual pieces of chain you want. So you want two of those. You want two quick connectors, like so. A pair of needle nose pliers, any old pair will do. Um, some poi chains. Uh, these are the Pro Series Single Loop from Homo Poi. They have swivels at both ends. You'll need two of those. A blowtorch. I use this burns matic really nice to screws on. Click it after you turn this part on and it starts right up. And the last thing, steel wool. Uh, the best grade I found is zero, so go with zero. Um, I'll explain what that means a little later. So step one, grab needle nose pliers, grab one chain, grab one poi handle and a quick connector. Put the quick connector on like so. Then you're gonna slide this part on as well. So it should look like that. Okay. Then right now, just so this doesn't fall off, go ahead and tighten that down. Grab one of your uh, steel wool and needle nose pliers. And what you're going to do is find the center as much as you can. Okay, find that center. And you're going to stick the needle nose pliers straight through the center of it. Some of them are hard, you got to kind of twist. And you want to maintain, stay in the middle of it. It helps to put your finger on the end like that, wrap your hands around it. Just keep twisting, twisting. Open it up if you may. And then you'll see it starts coming out the top. And then once it comes out the top like that, you open the needle nose pliers a little bit. Take your chain. Grab it. Okay. And then you slide this down. Right about there. Okay. And that's one. And you do the same thing for two more. And three. Once the third one gets on there, you take that portion of it. Okay, so you got three. And you're gonna open that up. So you can get to the quick connector. Undo the quick connector. And hook this piece on. Sometimes some steel wool gets stuck in the threading, so be careful. You want it to be able to screw all the way down. Make sure it's nice and hand tightened. And now what you want to do is create like a nice little bun. If there's any big pieces hanging off, you don't want that. You want a nice little bun. Kind of looks like Princess Leia here or something. And that's it. 
that's it. That's one. So do that for your other one too. So why I use zero? Why I use zero? And I'm going to talk about the difference between this and this. Yeah. The reason I use zero, it has to do with how well it sparks. Um, I've used zero zero and triple zero. I've never used the quad zero. I've used one, two, as well. I've even tried putting like zeros on the side and a one in the middle, zeros on the side with a zero zero in the middle. What I mean by that is this one would be like a different grade as this one. You know, I had like a really fine one right here and then I have two thicker ones. So anyways, the problem with that is if you go too fine, then you'll have a lot of sparks at first, but then they'll just die right down. When you go too coarse, you'll have bigger, shinier sparks, but it's not going to last near as long. And uh, sometimes, like I know the real thick grade, you can't even get it to spark like it should. So I'm going to show you something real quick. And this is what I mean. So when you're going out and you're wanting to light these, this is one of the things you're looking for. So let's see if I can get a good shot of this. So notice this is what looks like with just a lighter lighting, okay, and this is what you're looking for. See that? Okay. That hurt. <laughs> um, once that gets going, it just keeps going, 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 and it stays there for a while. Now, I don't use a lighter because it only lights like a small area like that. Whereas this, lights a huge, huge surface area of it, okay? Which is a lot better to get it start going. Now once it lights like that, you notice when I blew on it, it started to go a little bit more. Well, that's how this works. You supply this with oxygen by spinning it around and it just takes off and it engulfs this entire thing in sparks. Now remember the chain that's underneath, okay? That chain that we wrapped it around? Towards the end of spinning these things, hit them on the ground. Okay, when you hit them on the ground, it's gonna get all the excess steel wool off of the chain because if you don't hit them on the ground, then you're gonna have melted steel wool on the chain and when you're done, you're gonna be sitting there with needle nose pliers trying to get all this excess steel wool that didn't burn away off. So if you hit them on the ground, it sprays the rest of the sparks off and it's also a really cool effect. You'll get like a neat shower of sparks at that time, so. That is why I use zero grade and the difference between a lighter and a torch. Also, a torch burns at about 2,000 degrees, whereas a lighter is only about 600 to 1,000. So, a lot more heat you got with this thing. Another good plus is it has a flat base. So, you can light this thing. Let me show you real quick what it looks like. Did you just hear that? Once you light that, you can just set it on the ground and it stays there and you can come up to it and light your, your sparkle poi and go straight into it and not have to worry about putting out your lighter or anything. I've never damaged this thing from sparkle poi, so. These right here, I don't normally wear these when I perform this stunt, although I highly, highly recommend them. Highly, highly recommend them. This stuff, if it were to get in your eye, mmm, no bueno, no good, no good at all. Very dangerous. This is the worst injury I've ever had from Sparkle Poi. You see the scar right there. And it was when I was spinning them like this, and it came around and clipped me in the shoulder right there. Just grazed me, and it did that. So I've ruined a pair of shorts as well. And uh, don't do this in sandals, do it in a nice pair of shoes, or even barefoot. Now the reason I say barefoot or shoes 
and not sandals is I was doing it one time in some sandals that hooked around the back of my ankle and some of the sparks got under the bridge of my foot and I'm sitting there going ow 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 kicking my foot as I'm sparkling the boy trying to get the sparks out from underneath my foot as it's burning me so I don't recommend doing it in sandals um, let's see and barefoot cause well you can just walk away from it and do it in some clothes that you don't really care about. I killed a pair of nice shorts that I really liked in the past by doing it on a 4th of July event where uh, it grazed my shorts. It had a cargo pocket and it completely just went <laughs> ripped a hole in it. So yeah, it's that hot. It's that hot. A lot hotter than any other uh, fire prop I play with or that I know of. So this is definitely my favorite prop effect. So enjoy it. Um, have fun with it. Be very safe. I'm gonna. Next thing I'm gonna show you is how to sparkle the poi and where to sparkle the poi. Good. This is how we uh, sparkle the poi. Got my burner back there. Got my sparkle poi. Safety glasses set. So you have to know some movements. You gotta know how to do a three beat weave forward and possibly reverse. I would just say a three beat weave, forward or reverse. Okay, so what you wanna do is get them started like you saw in the room, except outside of course. And once they get sparking nice and good, all you need to do is throw this one over to the other plane. This one follows it, and that's your three beat weave. You just start into it. So you light right here, throw this one on top, and then continue like that. Okay, you can just sparkle away. Now, you wanna make sure your planes are flat, okay? Because if you turn like that, you're gonna throw sparks at people who are watching you. So, don't let that happen. Now, I turn in mid midway through this, Meaning I start going here, and I'll show you an example of this too. I'll start here, and then I bring them to my sides, and then I turn, and then I spin them even faster. The reason I do that is because in reverse spin, for me anyways, I can spin faster like this, but in forward spin, I can spin faster and keep my timing. Does that make sense? So I can spin faster and forward three beat weave split time and keep the, the timing split as opposed to spinning backwards split time. Whereas, see how it kind of, if I spin really fast, it just ends up going the same time. I don't know why. Ugh, I can only go so fast in reverse though. So that's the reason I turn into reverse. And as well, the reason I turn into reverse, that's when you hit them on the ground, okay? When the sparks start dying down, that's when you're going to smack them on the ground until all the excess is off of them. So, that's how to sparkle the poi. Now I'm going to show you where to sparkle the poi. Okay guys, where to sparkle the poi. I'm going to give you a little measurement estimate. See that end of that driveway right there where it curves up? Okay. Mark that right there, at the end of that driveway. All the way to the end of that driveway right there. Okay, where that mailbox is. So from that mailbox to basically... There you are, right where the white mailbox is pointing up at the top right there, the end of that driveway. Okay, so from the end of that driveway right on the top of the white mailbox, where that mailbox is. That's how much room you need. It's approximately about like uh, 150 feet, 160, close to 200. You want anywhere from 150 to 200 feet lengthwise, okay? Now, you would of course perform right in the middle of that and 
in front and back of you, you probably want about 30 to 40 feet, okay? Sparks are still gonna get away. That's just uh, the nature of the beast. You're gonna have sparks get away on you. So, be as careful as you can. Also, um, I've also heard of one other method. This is just one method that I know of for sparkle poi. I know of a method where you can take a bunch of chicken wire and bend it with pliers or whatnot into a big giant sphere. Now, the cool thing about having it in a giant sphere is you could stuff a bunch of those steel wool uh, pads inside of there. And so you can stick like a whole package inside of that cage. And all you do is just hook that up to your quick link on your poi. And you'd have a giant sphere of chicken wire with steel wool stuffed inside of it. Now imagine how much sparks that would throw off. Yeah.